Good morning, data enthusiasts. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Right now, I happen to be in foggy London town, enjoying my last evening here. I mean, I, I did enjoy my last evening here. Now I'm making some content, so that's enjoyable too. So challenge-wise and content-wise, we are on a hiatus. It is a hiatus between the 30-day, I'm still getting Teams messages, come on now, between the 30-day uh, Ultrix challenge, had a brain fart there, that ended September 30th, and we're going to start a 30-day Tableau challenge on November 1st. I do like to stick to those 30-day months, just gives it a nice symmetry. So during the month of October, we are going to do some different things, and I decided that I really, if I made some content, I wanted to parallel that and bring it back to the Alex the Analyst, Alex Freeberg's uh, free bootcamp that he put out a while ago. Oh, piss off notifications. Anyway, um, I'm getting distracted. If you are an Alex Freeberg fan or you are a YouTube, LinkedIn content creator fan, which if you're watching me, you probably are, um, big news today, more than you might think. Today, Alex came out with his Analyst Builder platform. Let's uh, cut the other screen in here. There we go. There it is, Analyst Builder. Um, I've just taken a quick look at the user interface. I, uh, I dropped 10 bucks, write it off as a business expense to try some of the questions. But um, yeah. So Analyst Builder came out. The other thing that flew a little bit more under the radar, but only because not as many people know him, that is my friend. Oh, I see. I scrolled down. I was busy reading it. My friend, Matt Bratton, uh, he came out. His TMB analytics platform came out with their new flagship Excel for Academy today. So if you are looking to become an Excel ninja, and just kick your skills into the highest level. I will post a link to both Excel for Academy and Analyst Builder into the comments of this video. Why does Edge keep giving me notifications? I hate you. I hate you, Edge. Anyway, um, I will post links to both of these things. Obviously, I don't think Alex needs my help, but um, Matt doesn't really either. Just know that I am an, an affiliate of Excel for Academy. If you choose to buy one of Matt's amazing courses, um, just know that it will not cost you an extra dime, but I will get a tiny fraction of the action. So anyway, just wanted to put that out there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do some content. This is a resumption of the challenge that Matthias Baudino threw at me when Alex for first came out with the uh, the free boot camp. And that was, I bet you won't do 50 push ups while reviewing every single one of these videos. How wrong you were, Matthias. I think you knew I would, but okay. So let me pause real quick and I'll see if I can get rid of these rotten Microsoft Edge notifications. And I'm going to knock out half of my push ups and then we'll start reviewing Alex the Analyst. Oh. Okay. I'm back. Push ups knocked out. Let me close these out. All right, and let's bring up Alex. There he is. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot through this a little quick. Matter of fact, let's speed Alex up just a tad. We're gonna go full two double speed. Let's go 1.5. So in this video, Alex shows you how to download Tableau. I'm not gonna belabor that. I'll probably just skip through that. Um, I really need to figure out. Turn off all notifications there. Okay, um, I'll probably blow through that because at the start of the month, when we do the 30 day challenge in November, um, I will do one where I'll show you how to download um, uh, Tableau Public at first. And then at some point mid month, we'll actually do the 14 day free trial of Tableau Desktop because that's what you need to do to test. Um, but yeah, we'll start out with Tableau Public. I'll do a video just showing you how to download it and get started. Um, but for right now, it's super easy. If you want to check out Alex's video, I'll link to that as well. And then, um, and I'll link to where the, the site where you can go to download Tableau Public. All right. So let's start Alex Chipmunk style. Let's go out.
All right. Yeah. So with this uh, crappy hotel Wi-Fi here, we get some buffering issues. So I may just kind of crack through these uh, chapters. Crack on, as the British say. Did have some uh, fish and chips for dinner tonight. Got to say I'm a little disappointed. I don't know if I got it from a bad restaurant or what, but I prefer the Australian version. I really do. Anyway, grew up in Australia. What can I say? All right. So Alex downloads Tableau Public. Wonderful. Tableau Public is free. Highly recommend you get in there and cut your teeth. In order to certify, which is what we're looking to do at the end of the month, you do need the full desktop version, but you can get that for 14 days. I just didn't want to recommend people do that at the start of the month and the clock's ticking. Um, if you are a college student full time, you can download it for a year. Though. So I may uh, lean on the wife who is doing her bachelor's degree to, to do that for me. OK, so downloading Tableau is this whole first chapter. You can skip to like the 230 mark and um, and then it's all downloaded and he starts going into getting data. Let's see if this is going to work. It's still buffered a little bit. OK, uh, show, show you in future. I'm going to show you some special or not special. Okay, so this is something I'd, I'd like to highlight what Alex is doing here. Really one of the things that I think all great data analysts do, and I don't have a fraction of Alex's experience with this, but the thing you need to do first off, and this is kind of hard to explain to people because it's not something tangible. It's not like take the SQL course or learn Python or, you know, it's not something that they can put their hands on. You really just need to have an innate curiosity. And so when you get a data set, the first thing you do is just kind of play with it. Just look with look at it, maybe throw it into a couple of quick visualizations, or, you know, a bar graph of different fields and, and just look at some histograms or distributions. But really just need to kind of scan through it and see, you know, what kind of fields do I have here? Do I have strings? Do I have numerics? Do I have, you know, are my strings, are things categorical? Are the numerics, um, are they discrete? Are they continuous? Um, do you have Booleans? Do you have anything like that? Do you have perfectly unique fields? Do you have any you know, any fields that only have one value? All of these things, just the kind of mental, like visual EDA that just gives you kind of a mental map of the data set. And you can do that within Kaggle when you download these data sets. Alex downloads a data set about video game sales. I'm you know, it's a good data set to use. People can identify with it. Um, it makes for, you know, you can do some cool graphics. You can do some pretty things in Tableau. If you put in a picture of like Super Mario or Zelda, or I'm dating myself here, you know, Final Fantasy, anything like that. You know, it looks really cool. Um, it doesn't really add anything to the actual information, but, you know, it's, it's nice eye candy, which is, that's a lot of what Tableau is, let's be honest. So, so he gets the data set. Um, what I did and what I recommend you do is go ahead and copy him. Go ahead and grab the video game sales data set. And I did that. And I copied the, the viz that he did blow for blow. And once I was done with that, I recommend you go one of two ways. You can either A, take the thing that Alex recommends, like follow all the directions so you understand the concepts that he's trying to explain, but then twist it, like take it a different direction, change the colors, change the if he used you know a certain field in the data go go pick another field um add something else make it a set if it's a you know an xy bar graph make it a double axis uh, you know a double y axis bar graph um make it a Pareto chart or something like that do do something different and interesting so that you're not publishing a carbon copy of alex freeberg's you know graph from two years ago because he's keeping it simple alex can do 10 times more than this most of you probably can too okay so he downloads it when you download the data set it's going to be your downloads folders okay it's breaking up a little bit so it's a CSV file. A lot of files on Kaggle are. It's a 
you know, a relatively compact and easy to store file that they're actually kind of large compared to the, you know, the amount of data that if you put it into the, an Excel workbook or something like that. But um, CSV file, comma separated value, a lot of people mistake it for an Excel file. It's not. Um, CSV files are text files. It can be the output of a database sometimes. But the Excel tends to be the default program in which you open it. So sometimes when you'll see CSV files in your file folders, you'll see them with the Excel logo. Certain platforms, when they bring them in, will bring them in all, bring all the fields in as string fields, which Alteryx will do that. It makes no assumptions. Tableau is going to try and figure out what kind of data you're looking at. So you can see he's brought in the CSV file here and he's got, you can see it's, you know, there's a little pound sign here. So rank is in, in numeric. It's a uh, name and platform obviously are strings because it's got alpha in there. And then year, you know, it tends to make some poor assumptions. So year is clearly a date or part of a date. It's just calling it a numeric. So you can get and run into problems there um, with some things that you can do with numerics. Years are, um, you know, in some respect, they're a qualitative number more than quantitative. But anyway, uh, a lot of times IDs, it'll turn it into numerics. So you got to watch out for that. Okay, so uh, here in a second, I'll, I'll cut over. Matter of fact, let's pause, Alex. Um, let's bring up Tableau Public. All right, so I've done that one. Let me, let me start a new, um, I've got a whole bunch of Tableau Public windows open, so my computer may start to take flight here. It tends to be a bit processing heavy to have this many windows open, but okay. So let's connect to data text file, and I think I left this in the downloads. Yep, it's in downloads. I just forgot which folder. Okay, so we're connected to VG sales. We brought it in as a text file, and you see that this data um, data input or data, data source screen populates everything. For some reason, this here, I don't know, like Tableau people, I guess I'm not. Maybe I don't have this. Okay, yeah, I guess you just gotta pull that up. I was like, why can't I see this? Okay, so this is your fields listing. So um, a lot of times, like this will be your kind of your metadata listing right here. It shows the table that it came from, um, the field name, remote field name. It's the same, and you can see it. It does assume some data data types. Most of these look pretty solid. All the sales numbers obviously are numbers. Genre public publisher name platform strings. The one that I would say, hey, year is is not too good. And actually, if you if you watch the rest of the video, um, Alex actually identifies that. So let's let's just go ahead. Yeah, if you change it to date, it's going to make it a year. So you can probably change that back to a string, just because you, it's unlikely you're going to try to do math with a year. Um, maybe I mean I think there there are some times when you'd want to do that, but probably just like a date difference. So saying like, hey, 2006 to 1985, what's the difference in years there? Um, you could do that, but I'm, I'm going to change it back to a string because we're not doing math with it in uh, in this one. Okay, so data upload is good, and then what Alex does next, I'll just go ahead and maybe we'll just kind of leapfrog back and forth. So he goes ahead and clicks this go to worksheet, sheet one. You can click that and it brings in your data here. Um, so the first thing that Alex goes over is talking about the shelves here. And the shelves are um, the columns and rows. And so Tableau is really great user-friendly interface. You can just drag and drop things into places and just see how they work. Take that back. The first thing he does is he starts dropping them into the the canvas here, where you're building the um, you're building the visualizations, and you can actually just it clearly says drop field here, drop field here, drop field here. So you can just let me make myself a little smaller there. You can just um, drag these things over. So let's go ahead and year. You can drop it here, and then the year becomes your columns. And then you know what do, what do you want to do? 
global sales. You can drop that, um, you can throw it over here and it's the rows. And now suddenly you have a histogram and it's just that simple. I mean, you can, you just dropped two things in there in the shells. I mean, the first one we did drop on the canvas, but that global sales, and you can see that turns into a different measure. So global sales has, has a lot of different data points. We dropped it in here in rows and it became the sum of global sales. So basically just groups that sales number by the year. Um, so interesting stuff to look at here. That's a, uh, huh. That's a, uh, you know, it looks like sales of video games peaked in like 09, 10 timeframe and then dropped off precipitously. So I would wonder why that was. Maybe they, you know, they counted a little differently with like downloading and, and stuff like that, or maybe the free like phone games are cutting into it. I don't know. Um, but that would strike me as very interesting. I'd, I'd want to know why that is. Um, and then you can, you know, you can kind of switch things um, and see how that works. Now we've got a, a vertical bar chart. A lot of people say that visually that's a little more appealing. Um, and then, you know, certain things you can do, you can drop the, you can drop them into marks. So you can take these, um, these measures and these, um, what are the, I always forget what non-measures are called. We got to click to convert. Dimension, there we go. Dimensions and measures. measures. So dimensions are the, um, you know, categorical, they're the string fields. Measures are, for the most part, the numeric fields. And you can see measures have little pound signs. Strings have little ABCs. And that's why year, we don't want that to be a dimension or a measure. We want that to be a dimension. You don't want to do math with it. You want to group by it. So it's categorical. Um, okay, so things that we can do. So if we want to take, you know, you can grab, if it's already up here in the shelves, you can still grab it again. You can drop it here into marks. And so let's drop it there into marks. And so we dropped year right on top of the little color tile. And now you can see that the years have been color coded. Now this doesn't necessarily, you know, if anything, this might actually be a bit of a distraction here, but, um, but you can see that that's adding a new element to it. Um, so you can go to year, um, let's actually pull year off of there. Let's go to see what genre does if we drop it under color. Okay, so now you're actually like breaking things down by something else. So now you got something that's actually pretty cool. It's a little distracting as a horizontal bar chart. We can go right here and we can pivot the chart. Not a pivot chart, but um, we can pivot the chart. And now we can see it's tough to compare some of the categories, but you can really see how things kind of grow and shrink. So sports was not a big thing. Um, until like the mid 90s and right about when like Madden became popular. But, you know, then sports kept growing as a uh, percentage of or as a proportion of the overall sales. It dropped when everything else dropped. And I think it dropped when a lot of the like college sports games, um, they started getting sued for making money off of the players and the players weren't getting compensated. So I know that 2014 around here was when NCAA football went away. Anyway, just kind of insider stuff. Um, you can see that certain things like the miscellaneous category got big there for a bit. I would wonder what that was about. Um, but then action games pretty much always, um, pretty much always big shooters in here, um, uh, kind of grew over time when the technology was built to, to make shooters popular and make them possible. And then, you know, they're kind of dominate now. So interesting stuff that you can, um, that you can do here, but this is a stacked bar chart. Let's go ahead and take genre and drop it on label. Um, yeah, it's not really working because there's not enough space for it. All right, let's get rid of genre and let's take, um, hmm, platform, let's put that on label. Okay, yeah, also not the greatest, but you can see here, um, the other thing you can do is go to this show me and it shows you all of the graphs that you can convert this to. Um, so you can go stacked bar chart. You can go bubble chart. This is a tree chart. So now you can actually see some of the labels on here. Um, 
it's not super informative. It tends to look kind of cool. You can see um, a bubble chart. Bubble charts work best with some some color coding. But um, okay, let's go back to our bar chart and let's get the platform off of here. So sum of global sales by year. Can't do hmm, can't do a line chart for this one. Okay, let's cut back over to Alex and see what he's doing. And maybe we'll copy that and sort of tweak some of the stuff that he's working on. So he talks through the basics here. He talks through the basics of the shelves. Um, so basically did does a lot of the things that I just did. He shows shelves, he shows marks. Um, let's get to where he's actually building. Okay, so what did he do? Year and sum of global sales. Okay. Um, oh, see, he left year as a measure. Yeah, maybe there's something to that. Let's take a look. All right, so year, yeah, we gotta drop that back here and let's go year, convert to measure. Okay, now let's do this and Still won't let us. Uh, still won't let us do a line chart. Yeah. Okay. So I went back out into data source and I converted year. I think I forgot that Alex did that. I converted year to the date. So all good. So we're back now. It's let us. You can see in show me. It's letting us do a line graph. Um, so super easy. Okay. So now we have a line graph and. What we want to do is label things. So let's see if we can take genre and label it. That starts looking a little messy. If we take genre and put it on color, now we've got, we've actually got something there. Um, try to label the platform. Nah, that doesn't work. Um, yeah, so label the genre. And let's change the label. So genre, line automatic. Let's go min and max. That's a little messy. Most recent line ends. Yeah, that doesn't really work all that well. So min and max, it looks like action pretty much it dominates all the time. Um, strategy is probably the min most of the time. I don't know what that says about your average uh, video game player. But uh, yeah, woo, that's a mess. Okay. Um, if you take off label minimum value, allow labels to overlap. Okay, I mean, that's a little bit better. So let's see what Alex does with it. It yeah, does some stack charts. All right, so this is where he starts getting into labels. Yeah, so we did that. Action strategy, min and max.
Okay, so let's give that a try. So pull genre out from the labels. We still got the genre colors. Let's get rid of show me so you can see the, the legend here. Let's make this a little bigger. And so what he did was pull global sales in and made that the label. So right now it's the max and min. Um, let's go ahead and mess with it. So max and min. Um, by cell, uh, labels to overlap. By uh, field by genre. So that's a little messy. Yeah, we don't want them to overlap. So min and max, line ends, nope, nope. Okay, min and max. Table, field, genre, label the maximum value. That looks like the minimum value. Okay. Yeah, that's, that looks pretty good. Don't want to mess with the alignment so much. Okay. Now what is Alex messing with? Let's see what he did that I didn't do. Minute max line automatic in all three checks at the bottom. Okay, let's see if we can get that same thing. Minute max line field automatic. Okay, yeah, I think that's about the same as he got. All right, let's go back. Now he makes a filter. All right, so what he does with filters is he takes platform and drops it up here in the filters block. So um, selects all of them, which isn't necessarily what you would want to do um, because you've got some real, you understand video games a little bit. You've got some real niche platforms in here, um, you know, big ones like 2600, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, all of these were huge. Um, but you know, do you want to include like Turbo Graphics 16 and Sega CD and things like that? It just kind of muddy the waters. Maybe, maybe not. Let's go ahead and use all um, and we'll apply that. So filters. Um, so now we're filtering by platform. Now nothing looks different. And the reason is you haven't filtered anything. So what you want to do is go show filter because right now we've selected everything, right? Well, we were bringing in everything, so we haven't changed anything. You go show filter and now it's it's on over here. Well, you're still filtered on everything, but now you can sit here and tweak it. So you're like, okay, well, I want to see, you say, take off all. I want to see only things that are, let's see, just the PC games. Okay, that's not that interesting. What about only original Nintendo Entertainment System? Um, yeah, platform was like the big thing. Remember the side scrollers and uh, and you know platformers, Mario jumping up and down. Um, okay, let's go PlayStation two, three, four, PlayStation Portable, PlayStation five, um, and just see how those stack up. So it looks like what was this one here? So Action had a great run, but this is PlayStation games only. So it looks like, uh, yeah, strategy is the low bar here as well. Um, okay, and then you could compare those to other um, other platforms, but cool. So let's go back over to Alex, see what he is up to since we left him. All right, what's up, Alex? Okay, so he filters, he shows the filters.
All right, so let's build that and then we'll take it kind of one step farther and make something slightly more interesting than this. Um, so he saves this all good. He goes down here and he makes another sheet. So new worksheet, um, genre in the columns, global sales in the rows. Okay, cool. And then he hits you with this sort button so you can sort your bar graph, assuming it's not time series or anything. So with years, that wouldn't work because you would reorder years. You don't want that. Um, time kind of goes in one direction. But um, so he, he organizes this into this kind of nifty looking slope down bar chart. And you can see that action is the king and strategy is nothing. Um, and then he brings in and, and color codes by genre. Now, that does make it look pretty. Well, like I said at the top, it doesn't really add any information. It doesn't make it any more informative. Um, so I don't find that to be terribly useful. It just makes it slightly nicer eye candy. We're not in this for that. Not that Alex is either. Alex knows exactly what he's doing. He's trying to keep it simple and he's trying to engage. Let's do something a little bit different. Um, instead of genre, let's try platform for color. Mm, okay, that makes a little bit of a mess not do that um how about publisher that's gonna be a lot too yeah okay let's go instead of genre for columns let's go year for columns and let's go show me let's make this a let's make this a bar chart um Nope, pivot that, didn't want it that way. So this button up here is the pivot. So you can go from horizontal to vertical. This isn't available in all charts, but it is for this one. I do want my years across the bottom because now I'm gonna drop genre on color and then we're gonna we're gonna make that graph we had at the start. I like this one much better. It's This is actually is informative with the colors and the size of the bars. You, you can, it's a little difficult, but you can compare and see, okay, how did, how did sports evolve? How did shooters evolve? How did action games evolve over time? Kind of went from almost nothing until about the mid nineties. There were no action games per se. Maybe like, maybe they're talking about stuff like Metal Gear um, that just, we didn't have the tech before. Um, yeah, so anyway, so I just find that a little more attractive, a little more informative. You could do something like that. That's um, kind of even a little bit cooler. Um, yeah, so as a matter of fact, let's, let's go with that. So I'm going to leave this one here and then let's see. The last thing Alex does is build a brief dashboard. So let's check that out. Okay. So we can probably leave Alex alone for the rest of the time and just go ahead and build this thing. So this second option here, you can see it says new dashboard. Let's go ahead and build our new dashboard. And we're gonna go sheet one. You can see you drop it right here. And then what the other thing he does is size. Um, you can just go automatic and it's gonna stretch to fit the size of the screen. You don't need to show me anymore. Um, and then we're gonna take sheet two and we're gonna drop that right in there. Um, sheet two probably could have done with a couple of labels as well. Um, but really you can just kind of hover over the things and see this is action in 2008. Um, so that's pretty interactive and informative. It just kind of looks super cool. So I think that's pretty good. Now you could change the names of your sheets if you wanted. Um, so let's edit title. Let's say, what, what are we gonna say here? Um, um, sales by year and genre yeah i think you have to put it in the little any brackets you go, oh because we didn't need the pointy brackets <laughs> see i'm learning too stick with me kids i'll make you a genuine Tableau hero, just like me. Okay, sales by year and genre. Let's fix this one, edit sheet one. And we're gonna say this is just sales. I mean, really it's sales by year and genre too, but. Oh, 
So I've tried several times to make this video. And at this point, it's just, it's going out by hook or by crook. So sales by a year. Okay, cool. Um, all right. And that is pretty much it. So that is a dashboard. Um, I've already done several versions of this. So my Tableau public is slowly getting filled up with kind of silly dashboards. Let me show you some other things that I did. Um, so I pulled something I care about a little bit more than video games, and that is football. And so I pulled some data on the NFL draft and showed this one shows the number of players drafted by each team during that time frame. And then this here shows the positions. My um, these two here are reversed should not be up there. You should be down here. Anyway, it eh, doesn't matter. But this shows the, the positions of players that were drafted throughout the years. And then I have one more on the NFL draft. So this one goes at it from the college side. This line graph is a bit messy, but I just kind of dug it anyway. Um, top 10 programs that had players drafted from during that time frame. And it shows the max that they had. There's Ohio State right there, 12 players in uh, 2000. 16 that was a pretty good year that was all the players from the championship team that graduated or just got drafted whatever um anyway and then top 10 programs with pro that had players go to the pro bowl by certain positions so this one's kind of cool to look at you see how many programs are like linebacker u miami florida state usc that's pretty cool ohio state defensive end university yeah, you know, there's worse things you could be known for. Okay. Um, and so these I've already published out to Tableau Public. No, I didn't change anything. Um, and so this one, let's go ahead and publish it. So we're going to go file. Let's going to go uh, save to Tableau Public. Yeah, I think I'm signed in. So I was at the start of the video. All right. Um, so what do we want to call this? So video game sales, very, that'd be awesome. Variations. Okay. Video game sales, variations. Cool, cool. All right. So I can't, for some reason, uh, StreamYard won't let me see how long I've been recording because this stupid top banner hangs over everything. Thanks, StreamYard. Glad I pay for you. Um, but anyway, so I think this video has been going on quite long enough. You, now you can see that's published out there. Um, go ahead and I'll, I'll start my own video. To heck with it. So um, if you go to my profile, you're going to see a whole lot of these. So I've got the Iowa Booze Project. That was one we did for uh, Modal when I was working there. But um, yeah, video game sales variations. You can see Alex the Analyst Dashboard 1. NFL draft dashboard, NFL draft dashboard number two. So I'm, I'm making quite a few of these. You're going to see my, uh, I'm, I'm going to get pretty prolific. I'm just going to start all of my own. Back with it. I like all my own dashboards. Um, I'm, I'm going to get pretty prolific with these dashboards. I don't know. I got 15 now. Yeah, I expect in a couple of weeks. By the time we start the Tableau challenge, I'll probably have 30 on here because I'm just kind of cranking out a bunch of different ones for each video. I urge you to do the same. Go ahead and get in here and experiment with these things. Don't just copy Alex. Don't just copy me. Get in there, find a data set that moves you about a topic that interests you and go make some visualizations with it. Okay. So what are we going to do with this? Um, in, in a day or two, maybe even tomorrow, since I got one more day here in foggy London town, and it's supposed to be really nasty tomorrow, like raining, um, I may take a look at Alex's analyst builder platform and do a quick review of it. Um, right now, I just have the questions, but I may buy one of the courses just to see how it is. And um, yeah, I'm really kind of give it a good look. Maybe we'll do a couple of videos. Maybe I'll do one on the questions and one on the um, on one of the courses. So let me know. Um, he's got right now. He's got three SQL courses on there. He's got one Python course. Let me know which one you'd like to see me review. I'll, I will go ahead and buy that course and do a review of it. Maybe I'll even finish it and post the certificate. Who knows? Crazier things have happened. Go get Matt Bratton's uh, course as well, the Excel for Academy. I have done probably about 30% of that course. 
And I think I will, yeah, maybe we get enough attention with the Alex Freeberg reviews. Maybe I'll do a review of Matt's stuff as well. I mean, who am I kidding? I'm going to do a review of Matt's uh, site as well. So look forward to that. Tons of good stuff going on. Tableau, push-ups, Alex Freeberg, Matt Bratton, Excel, good stuff. I'm in London, flying back tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. Maybe I'll do a video from the airport. How about that? Okay, Um, because I got an overnighter in Boston. Yeah, good times. I got my pillow, I got my blanket, everything already. Okay, folks, I don't have much left for you. It's late now. I need to get some sleep. I got a big travel day tomorrow, although I'll sleep on the plane. But um, yeah, not much left to say except for if you stick with me, I'm going to make you a genuine Tableau hero just like me.